After all, what's the ideal rest time between sets? Most people who don't see results in the bodybuilding world usually think they need to push harder or eat better. And yes, those are usually the most important factors, but the fact is that almost no one stops to analyze another very decisive aspect, the rest time between sets. If you ignore this crucial interval, you might be compromising your muscles' full potential, even if you're doing everything else right. That's why in this video you'll understand why proper rest during your workout can be the real game-changer in your physical development, and what the best interval is for hypertrophy. But before we start, please drop your name and the city you're from in the comments. Rest time between sets is often seen simply as a break to catch your breath, but it's much more complex than that. Depending on your goal, whether it's gaining muscle mass, increasing maximum strength, or improving muscular endurance, each of these focuses has a more suitable rest range. The reason for this lies in several physiological processes, such as ATP resynthesis, lactate removal, rebalancing energy substrates, and even the psychological factor of getting your mind ready for the next set. The first thing to understand is that there's no rigid rule that applies equally to everyone since each body reacts differently. However, there are general guidelines that can serve as a solid foundation for most trainees. Usually, when we talk about maximum strength training, with heavier loads and fewer reps, a longer rest time is recommended. This can range from about 2 to 5 minutes, as the neuromuscular demand is very high and the body needs more time to recover energetically. On the other hand, when the main goal is muscle hypertrophy, many athletes and coaches tend to use intervals of approximately 60 to 90 seconds, since this period keeps the muscle under more constant tension throughout the workout, boosting the famous pump, as well as generating significant metabolic stress. We could call this a general standard you see in gyms, right? But here's where an interesting point comes in. Even when focusing on hypertrophy, it's possible to alternate rest periods throughout your workouts. In some sets, especially for compound exercises, you might prefer to rest a bit longer to maintain high-quality reps, while in isolation exercises or in training phases where metabolic stress is the priority, shorter intervals are very welcome. Speaking of compound exercises like squats, bench presses, and deadlifts, they engage multiple muscle groups and therefore demand a lot of energy and neuromotor recruitment. Rest periods of about two minutes may be insufficient for some trainees, especially those training at near maximum intensity. In this case, Allowing two to three minutes can be more beneficial to ensure consistent performance across all sets. For isolation exercises like barbell curls or French presses, the interval can be shortened to keep the target muscle under frequent stimulation. Another relevant factor is that as you progress in the gym, becoming stronger and more resistant, your body tends to recover faster, but also ends up requiring more time to replenish the energy spent on heavy loads. In other words, a beginner who's not yet lifting very heavy weights might recover more quickly in cardiovascular terms, but won't necessarily be able to restore muscle energy as fast as a more advanced athlete. On the other hand, an experienced athlete, although recovering quickly from lighter efforts, sometimes needs longer rest periods to handle the high intensity of compound exercises. Another point that few people mention is biological individuality. Two people training side by side with the same routine and same weights might still need different rest intervals. Sometimes genetic factors or even each person's aerobic condition influence their recovery pace. That's why it's essential for each trainee to observe how they feel during workouts. If you notice your performance drops drastically in the next set, your rest might be too short. On the flip side, if you feel like you're resting so long that you completely lose muscle activation or focus, it's time to shorten that rest. All these variables make rest time a much more complex topic than it seems. It's not just about resting for one or two minutes. You need to adjust it according to the exercise, the intensity, the training phase, and most importantly, how your body responds. Now, you need to understand some protocol variations and recognize how each rest interval choice can directly impact your gains. Whether your goal is to increase strength, hypertrophy, or improve muscular endurance. But before that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, because in a space where many spread false information just for views, having access to the right information is what will help you make long-term progress in the fitness world. Let's start by talking about the three main rest zones that, generally speaking, are the most discussed in strength training. Short interval, from 30 to 60 seconds. 
This type of interval is usually used in muscular endurance training or in methods that aim for high metabolic stress. If your goal is major calorie burn and an intense pump, short rests can be an interesting strategy. However, it's important to understand that with rest intervals of just 30 to 60 seconds, it'll be hard to use very heavy loads in all sets since the muscle won't have enough time to fully replenish ATP. Lactate also builds up more quickly, resulting in early fatigue. On the other hand, this same lactate buildup and partial energy depletion can be beneficial for hypertrophy when used strategically, as they stimulate different muscle growth pathways, like metabolic stress. Also, some people use short intervals in more isolated exercises, especially at the end of a workout, to maximize that feeling of exhaustion in the target muscle. Moderate interval, from 60 to 120 seconds. This is the range that many trainees aiming for muscle hypertrophy end up adopting as their standard. In this moderate interval, you can still maintain relatively high intensity because the muscle gets a decent rest to replenish part of the ATP and glycogen, but not so much that it completely dissipates the accumulated metabolic stress. This means you maintain a balance between keeping the muscle under tension and ensuring enough energy for good performance. Many hypertrophy training protocols, especially in the popular bodybuilding splits, are based on this rest range. It also helps keep the workout pace more dynamic without excessive breaks that can cool the body down or break concentration. Long interval, from two to five minutes. For those aiming for maximum strength, performing lifts with heavy loads and low reps, the long interval becomes almost mandatory. In this longer break, the body has more than enough time to regenerate ATP levels and allow the central nervous system to recover for the next heavy set. This is when we're able to give our all again because we're not limited by the residual fatigue from the previous effort. Powerlifting athletes, for example, usually rest at least three minutes between sets of main exercises like squats, bench presses, and deadlifts. When the goal is to lift maximum loads, neural fatigue becomes a crucial factor, and long pauses help recharge not just the muscle, but the entire system responsible for movement, including aspects of coordination and focus. Beyond these three standard rest intervals, there are also variations that mix different rest times within the same training session. For example, in a wave-style workout, you can start with pure strength sets using longer rest periods, then move on to hypertrophy sets with moderate intervals, and eventually finish with finisher protocols using short rests. This variation creates different stimuli, which can be beneficial for both strength and muscle mass gains. It also makes the workout more dynamic and less monotonous. But of course, to find out what works best for you, it's essential to have at least some knowledge about your physical condition, your recovery capacity, and what your training priorities are. Experienced coaches know that rest time is also periodized throughout the year, whether during off-season for bodybuilders or in prep phases for strength athletes. There are times when shortening the interval is advantageous to increase calorie expenditure and metabolic stress, and there are phases when lengthening the rest is the key to hitting truly heavy loads and forcing strength adaptations. And we can't ignore external factors that influence your recovery. A good night's sleep, proper nutrition, and low stress levels help you replenish your energy stores faster. An athlete who sleeps poorly, eats inadequately, and is stressed by daily life may need longer rest intervals because their body isn't as efficient at restoring what's been depleted. So when thinking about rest intervals, keep your routine outside the gym in mind as well. Someone who works on their feet all day, for example, might feel more fatigue in their legs, and that can impact performance in exercises like squats. We can also talk about advanced techniques that completely change the rest dynamic, like drop sets, rest pause, and cluster sets. The drop set involves reducing the load immediately after failure to keep performing reps. In other words, you pretty much don't rest. The weight change is almost instant. In rest pause, you take a short break of about 10 to 15 seconds mid-set to squeeze out a few more reps. And in the cluster set, you break the set into small blocks of reps with micro pauses of 10 to 20 seconds. All these techniques aim to manipulate fatigue and time under tension to maximize gains. These are strategies that require experience as they modify traditional training variables, including the rest interval between sets. That's why, if you're just starting to train, our recommendation is to focus on mastering the basics. The idea here isn't to lay down a rigid rule, but rather to give a clearer picture of how rest intervals can be managed. 
This understanding gives you the power to shape your training based on your routine, your time availability, and especially your goal. If you want to prioritize strength, go with longer rest intervals. If the focus is traditional hypertrophy, moderate intervals usually work very well. And if your goal is endurance or a very intense metabolic workout, short intervals might be the way to go. Just keep in mind, this will limit the load you can use. The most interesting part is that, after lots of practice, you start to intuitively feel when you're ready for the next set. But in the beginning, it's really helpful to use a timer or watch to track your rest. After all, our sense of time under fatigue and adrenaline can be off. Sometimes we think two minutes have passed, but it's only been one or the other way around. Another important point is how the psychological factor comes into play. Some people, if they stay idle too long, lose focus or even the energy to get back into a heavy set. Others don't feel ready unless they rest for a longer period. So beyond the purely physiological context, rest needs to fit your training style. There's no point in trying to stick to short intervals if you hate that feeling of racing against the clock and end up sabotaging your own set intensity. Just like it doesn't make sense to stay still for five minutes between sets if you already feel ready before that, because you might lose focus and not have the ideal mindset for perfect execution. To illustrate how rest intervals influence your training and practice, think about this example. Let's say you manage to do three sets of eight reps on the bench press with 132 pounds, resting two minutes between sets. Now, if you cut that rest down to one minute, maybe on the second set you'll only get seven reps, and on the third, just five or six. In other words, the total work volume, meaning reps times weight, decreases. That can affect the hypertrophy stimulus in one way, but increase metabolic stress in another. Depending on your plan, that could be good or bad. Another source of confusion is when we talk about total workout time. People with very tight schedules want to optimize every minute at the gym and may try to minimize rest intervals so the session doesn't drag on too long. If that's your situation, then adjusting your rest can help finish the session in time. But keep in mind you might also need to adjust volume or intensity so you don't compromise the quality of your sets and, as a result, your progress. The key to it all is balance. Giving proper importance to rest between sets is one way to professionalize your training, even if you're not an elite athlete. It's knowing that the pause isn't wasted time. On the contrary, it's a tool for building the gains you're chasing. A great way to periodize your rest is to think in training blocks over weeks and months. For example, you can have a three to four week phase with shorter intervals, emphasizing metabolic conditioning and muscular endurance, then switch to three to four weeks with moderate intervals to focus on hypertrophy, working with different volumes and intensities. After that, you might move into a two to three week phase with longer intervals, focusing on maximum strength and hitting heavier loads. This oscillation of stimuli not only helps prevent plateaus, but also allows different energy systems to develop throughout the year. On top of that, varying your rest time can help keep training mentally stimulating. If you've always used one minute rests, it might be interesting to go through phases with two or three minutes, testing your ability to lift heavier. Similarly, if you've always used long rest periods, shortening the interval in some training blocks might boost muscular endurance and create a new kind of overload for your muscles, generating positive adaptations. It's also worth noting that in advanced training, rest time can relate to exercise order. Sometimes it's beneficial to pair two exercises that don't target the same muscle groups, using a different rest scheme for each one. For example, you can superset a leg exercise with a back exercise, alternating them so each muscle group gets more rest than the time it actually takes to perform the set of the other group. This kind of strategy makes the workout more intense and maximizes every rest interval in a smart way. As you gain experience, you also realize that rest time doesn't have to be fixed for the entire workout. You can rest for two minutes during the first sets of a heavy compound exercise, and as you move on to accessory or more isolated exercises, reduce the interval to one minute. This flexibility makes sense because, in the beginning, you want to ensure top performance in movements that demand greater overall strength. With accessories, the goal is often just to keep a steady stimulus, without needing as much energy replenishment for heavy loads. A common mistake is thinking that just because you read a general guideline of one-minute rest, you have to stick to it rigidly. In practice, every workout is a different scenario. You might need an extra minute after a set that was extremely heavy, or that went beyond your planned reps. 
that's totally fine, as long as you're mindful not to turn your rest into an unnecessary long break. Remember, the goal is always to get the best out of your body by balancing intensity and recovery. And don't forget, when we talk about rest, it's not just about how much you rest between sets at the gym, but also how many days you rest before training the same muscle again. So, if you also want to understand the best interval of days to rest before hitting the same muscle again, make sure to check out the video that's showing on your screen right now where we explain everything you need to know about that. Thanks for watching and may God bless you, my friend.